you as John Bloom. Now, you, you created this Joe Bob Briggs character and uh, initially for writing, right? When you were with the, was it the Herald? or? Yeah, I was at the Dallas Times Herald and I, I became, uh, uh, I was trying to finish a book, a true crime book. And uh, I wanted to, I was a reporter. And I wanted to have a uh, um, something to do where I didn't have to slide down the fire pole and run off and do, uh, you know, stories all the time. And uh, the the film critic had left the paper, and so I asked the entertainment editor, "Can I be the interim film critic?" So, because uh, it sounded to me like a cushy job, right. um, which you you just go to screenings every day and you you know write the review and uh, you never have to travel or anything. I didn't know at the time that about the junket, about the movie critic junket, you know, <laughs> but, but, um, uh, so I started doing the job and I watched every movie that came out and it was the era of the, the, the big mainstream Hollywood pictures were really bland and I, I didn't really care for them at all. Mm -hmm. um, I like the foreign stuff because by the time the foreign stuff gets to Dallas, Texas, you know, it's like the top 1% of right. what came out of Europe. You know, it's yeah. like you don't really have to worry about going to a foreign film in Dallas. You know, it's going to be good. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have made it to Dallas if it wasn't good. Um, and then I like the I like the exploitation stuff, including the stuff that came out of Hong Kong. And so, but I noticed that stuff would, you know, Friday would come around and here would be three pictures that were opening at the drive-in that I hadn't seen. And so I'd call up the distributor, hey, well, why didn't you screen this movie? Oh, we don't ever screen our pictures for critics, <laughs> you know. And um, that's when I created this character, Joe Bob Briggs, the drive-in movie critic um, at the time of Rockwall, Texas. Rockwall didn't have a movie theater. <laughs> and so, um, and I just told one guy that I was doing it, uh, and I did it specifically as a Mark Twain type hoax where I was going to try to stay under the radar and no one was going to know who Joe Bob Briggs was. Actually, uh, I went through several other names it, it, uh, uh, it, the original name was going to be Bubba Gonzalez. <laughs> and um, because a big part of the drive-in audience was Hispanic in Texas. So I wanted him to be half white, half Hispanic. And the editor talked me out of it, said it might be perceived as racist. And I said, okay, well, I'll make it the whitest name I can come up with. So I made it Joe Bob Briggs. And um, invented a whole backstory. And... Um, started reviewing the movies. The first movie was um, uh, the actual name that it was released under is Anthropophagus. Uh, it was released in America as the Grim Reaper. It's a uh, Greek-Italian uh, cannibal classic. <laughs> and and um, that's the first movie I reviewed, and it was at the drive-in. And, um, uh, and each week, uh, we, we, we buried the column. We intentionally buried it because we knew that editors wouldn't like it the the top editors so we put it there was a friday section that was like the weekend guide and it was full of discount furniture ads and you know uh, it was it was this greasy thing that the ink would come off on your hands and we were back there at page 34 or something it was like really buried in the back of the thing it was like um uh, this thing was so cheap. I mean, it made the New York Post look like, you know, the New York Times. It was just, and so in the, in the, despite being back there doing that, um, from the very, I would say the second week, started getting tons of fan mail. Who is this guy? Love this, love, love these, you know, reviews. Um, and so it just developed from there. And the, the character developed from, uh, well, I mean, I'm from the South. I'm from, I, I, I'm, I, I have, a, a, I know the types. And, uh, and so I, I developed it from there. And um, eventually Joe Bob was talking about things other than movies. And then 
became controversial because Joe Bob's opinions were controversial, and then, you know, it, it went on from there. Uh, but it, it, in even in 19, it started in 1981, uh, and. Uh, I was able to keep the identity, my own identity, secret until 1985. Now, in the in the in the world of, you know, e even in even in the pre-internet world today, it's impossible to do any kind of literary hoax of any kind. Um, they they get you right away, you know. But um, even at that time, it was becoming increasingly difficult. Uh, as, you know, news crews would show up, you know, and, um, um, you know, so there would be speculation about who was writing it and things like that, which I loved, you know, but uh, I couldn't keep it. I would have I continued to keep it um, uh, uh, a complete pseudonym, but um, it, uh, it all blew up in my face. And when it blew up in my face, I said, well, okay, I'll just go the other direction. I'll start being Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, in public, and I actually started going to civic clubs and things, and like just doing a little Joe Bob spiel. And um, from that, um, they asked me to host movies uh, as a guest host. Uh, actually, it was that Rolling Stone article in uh, uh, about Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. They said, "Let's have this guy be a guest host uh, one Friday night on uh, the Movie Channel." And they just kept inviting me back and invite me back and invite me back. And at the time, there were four hosts uh, uh, that represented different genres, and they kept firing them. And eventually, I was just like uh, virtually all alone in this big, <laughs> s huge soundstage. We, mo we were shooting out of um, the old Dumont Studios in uh, Spanish Harlem. Uh, and in fact, the original... Uh, Joe Bob Briggs uh, set I discovered to my horror <laughs> had been pa they painted over an old Jackie Gleason set <laughs> from <laughs> oh my God. Oh. from the 50s you know they just like you know they just I'm sure it's now painted over for something else but um, uh, um, it was just ridiculous for me to be in this huge soundstage uh, the honeymooners soundstage, you know, for, doing, this little uh, show. Uh, doing this little show. And so I finally said, look, I can shoot this thing myself in Texas. You know, there's no reason to do this. <laughs> and so we moved it to Texas and shot it much cheaper, like, you know, 10 times cheaper than what they, what they spent did you, in New York. Now, did you ever, um, uh, did, was it ever exhausting or did you ever, was there ever a big enough to, difference between you and Joe Bob Briggs that it became exhausting at people's anticipation of you or what they expected of you or no because I didn't I never had Joe Bob Briggs say anything that John Bloom didn't believe it was just said in a in a more exaggerated manner so um so even so I, I thought it, it would be ridiculous to have me spouting a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of nonsense um you know, just to be causing trouble. But uh, if I took things that I would say anyway, but just put them in the Joe Bob voice, which is exaggerated and 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 sometimes obnoxious, uh, then um, it'd be more fun. So, no, I never had any any uh, problem with uh, defending anything that Joe Bob did or said, and I had to defend it, you know, quite a bit. Um, there were pro. There were various protests at various times. 